Hello, October 5th, 2020. We are very pleased to record this interview from Singapore. We have the honor to host Dr. Chua, that is an expert in healthcare dealing with the containment of infection diseases since many years. He is a consultant of the WHO for the Asia Pacific area, but in addition, he's also a businessman. He is the CEO of a group of nine company dealing with science, technology, and biosafety in healthcare. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chua, to be with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Galiumi, for having me. And uh, I think, uh, you know, as you have just said, I think the pandemic has affected the whole world very badly. I think this is, uh, to many people, it's a once in a lifetime kind of experience, uh, the severity of the pandemic. And I think Singapore, uh, we had our own challenges. We had our own trouble. Uh, but uh, the good thing about uh, uh, our experience here is because Singapore was hit by the SARS in 2003, and that was 17 years ago. And that SARS have taught us very valuable lessons uh, in uh, containment of this kind of outbreak. Now, I still recall that during the SARS in 2003, you know, during the outbreak, the first couple of months, there were a lot of questions, but there were very few answers. And many of us were struggling you know, with this new uh, virus. And we, at that time, it was not even classified as a coronavirus yet. You know? So there were a lot of questions, but no answers. But anyway, uh, it affected the economy so badly that airlines started, uh, they stopped flying. The hotels were empty for three months. Uh, the taxi drivers were crying because there were no passengers and, uh, you know, and everywhere restaurants were closing. So it had a tremendous impact on the economy aside from the loss of precious life. So that experience with the SARS have taught Singapore a very valuable lesson. And in that sense, we are a little bit better prepared for the COVID-19 because we have put together the mechanism of how to respond to this kind of uh, outbreak of disease. And we had certain mechanism all in place that we had to mobilize. So uh, in, in the, uh, when the government, when we were getting news from China as early as January about this, uh, about this outbreak of disease there, uh, it was also at the time when the Lunar New Year, which is the Chinese New Year, uh, was just around the corner and people were going to travel. So it was a major challenge. Should we close our border or should we leave it open? Because a lot of people have to go back home. Many of the people in Singapore are from Malaysia and they had to go back for their, the Chinese New Year holidays to be with their family. So do we lock it down? Do we not lock it down? There were a lot of questions. So um, I think uh, to summarize this part about Singapore, uh, or perhaps even in the Asia Pacific region, I would say that uh, wearing of masks, social distancing, uh, hygiene, good hygiene, hand sanitization, these are all measures. But really, in my observation, these measures are everywhere. But what really makes it effective to me as an observer is that it is the culture. It is the culture of exercising good social responsibility. I think this was one of the key success factor is good social responsibility. Uh, if I may, uh, if you see that uh, in the Asia Pacific region, when it comes to healthcare or even for other matters, uh, there is this value that, that the collective rights is more important than the individual rights. So when you have very good leadership and when the leader say, wear your mask, you know, everybody wears the mask. You know, they do not talk about, they do not, they do not uh, sort of try to get into a, a debate about their human rights and things like that. Everybody wears a mask, it's a culture. And when the government says, you know, isolation and we lock down, everybody stay at home, everybody stay at home. 
Now, this to me is a culture that is where it brings about the effectiveness of the measure of, uh, of like, you know, wearing of masks uh, and so on and so forth, cleaning of hands and so on. It is the culture that makes it this measures effective. Now, Dr. Chua, we are moving uh, to the business and the business at the time of the pandemia and how to uh, link uh, the economy with uh, the answer care. You wanted to comment on your perspective uh, from Singapore. It's a very good question about the, uh, you know, the complexity of a pandemic in terms of the medical aspect of it, uh, uh, the economic aspect of it, and where, how do we keep a good balance and move this on? Because when the lockdown is extended, a lot of people lose their job and uh, it affects the economy very badly. And I think this is a, a balancing act for all uh, all countries and all governments to strike a balance somewhere. And uh, Singapore also faced that, that situation. Uh, I, I think the bigger picture is that I think for a pandemic like that in any country, uh, including Singapore, I think what is very important is to have very good leadership uh, that has that clarity of a strategy, a national strategy to keep the, the, the the, the outbreak in contain, that they are well contained, and at the same time, uh, to uh, not to kill the economy by extending the lockdown for an extended period of time. So I think everybody faced the same challenges. Now, the, the, the fundamental is that the science must take priority because as long as the outbreak is not contained, people are not wearing masks and there's no contact tracing and the spread continues, this will, this will inevitably affect the economy and many of the restaurants, companies will stop working and so on. And, and if this goes on, it's going to be a, a problem. So uh, I think to address this in terms of the economy and the, and the medical aspect of it is that we need a very good leadership with the clarity of mind to strike a good balance. Dr. Chua, Singapore is uh, really in a high-tech uh, country. How the high-tech uh, and the digital might help uh, the healthcare system uh, orienting uh, the strategy and uh, giving also better opportunity for the investment? Yes, I think uh, technology is an important aspect of, uh, uh, that we have to harness to fight this uh, disease. And in Singapore, I think uh, we had a very clear national strategy. We must detect and we must isolate, uh, do contact tracing and isolate. In detection, we wanted to find the best technology to detect so that we know whether this person is positive or not. And uh, of course, the, 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 I mean, the gold standard is using the PCR for nucleic acid detection uh, aside from those other type of uh, uh, methods that have been used, but, but detection is so important. But after detection is where we wanted to see who else has been subjected to risk in contact tracing. So the initial part, we had to, we had to deal with the patient themselves who are tested positive, where have they been, who are the people they have met and so on. That was the initial stage. Once the thing was gaining momentum, we quickly turn on to technology and we use today, everybody has a smartphone. So we started to do that every office, every restaurant, every public places will have a place where we can scan a QR code. And this QR code is personal and you have your information there. When you scan the QR code, your personal information will get into that, that, that database that you were in such a place at such a time. And when do you leave that place? So if there is a COVID-19 patient that happens to be tested positive, they are going to go back and track him and say, where were you yesterday? You know, and so on. So with technology and this big data, we're able to track them using QR code to trace them. And, and the government has also provided us like a little dongle, you know? wearables and so on, that wherever you go, when a facility require you to, to, to identify yourself, you just need to take this and, and tap, on, 
tap on the thing, straight away it will pick up all your data that uh, uh, so and so has been there, what time and when you leave. So that if they find that anyone in that facility have contracted or tested positive, they can use this big data and database and they can go back and inform everyone else who were in that facility, you know, uh, for that given time. And, and then we will require them to come in for testing or for isolation, for quarantine. Thank you very much. We learn a lot, uh, we got a lot of uh, suggestions. Uh, we will be back and try to discuss uh, this uh, vision from uh, Singapore. But uh, very happy to have uh, this chance uh, to host you at uh, this uh, triage uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Stay safe.